looking back at our notification feature, we did a pretty good job by implementing the factory method pattern and adding extensibility to our design. Now suppose you're now assigned a task to add another feature to your desktop application. Now this feature is the offline downloader feature, which is going to enable our users to download media presented in different parts of our application to their local storage for viewing the media offline. Now this downloader can have different appearances based on the operating system our application is running. For example, the progress bar shown in this downloader can look entirely different than that in macOS from Windows or Linux. So it seems like we're facing the same problem of making the feature support multiple looks and feels. Now let's see if we can solve this problem with our good old factory method pattern. Now let's start mapping our downloader problem into a class diagram. Let's create an interface for the downloader and think of all the possible methods that can go inside this interface. For example, there's going to be a render method for our downloader too, which is going to take a progress, you know, how much files have been downloaded. It's going to show the progress in percentage and the media files being downloaded. And it's going to take this information and render the downloading progress into the view. Then we can have another method called cancel download, which is just supposed to um, cancel the, the current downloads in progress and we can also pause the downloads. Now, just like our notification feature, our downloader can have a very separate implementation for Windows operating system and a Mac and an implementation for the Mac OS and Linux as well. Now, looking back at the class diagram from a previous example of notification feature, we created a notification creator class consisting of a notification creation factory method called create a notification which returns the concrete instantiations of different operating system supporting notification classes. For example, our Windows notification can be returned if the configuration or if the configured operating system is um, Windows and similarly for Mac OS and Linux. And all of these if statements were present inside this create notification. Now we could use a similar approach and create another download creator class where we can have an other create downloader factory method which returns a generic downloader interface type and again this downloader um, this download creator class will be responsible to return our concrete um, implementations of downloaders based on the configured operating system and we can have the similar amount of if statements to check for the configured operating system now Suppose in future we have many other features getting implemented and have a very similar nature to check for the configured operating system to support multiple look and feel standards. And let's suppose some someday in the future you decide that you need to add an other operating system support to your application. Now to support this operating system you have to modify the lines, the multiple if statements written inside these factory methods and you can only imagine the amount of modification required to um, add support for this new operating system. And we're essentially violating the open close principle we learned about in our previous video. Now this is an ideal scenario to incorporate abstract factory pattern into our design. The abstract factory pattern enables us to define an interface for creating families of related or dependent objects without ever needing to specify their concrete classes. Now, if you remember the previous um, pattern, which was the factory method pattern, the factory pattern was only enabling us to create one factory method inside one class. And the abstract factory pattern essentially takes it to the next level. And let's see this and let's see how it's, this is possible with the help of a class diagram. Suppose we have a product X interface, which has its concrete implementations such as product X A and X B. And let's suppose we have another product, which is product Y, and it has also some of its concrete implementations such as concrete YA and concrete YB. Now this abstract factory pattern suggests that we have an interface called abstract factory, which has two methods. The first is the create product X method, which is supposed to return the interface type product X. 
and another method called product y create product y which is going to return the interface type product y now you must be wondering okay if these two methods are supposed to return the generic interfaces how are we going to ever create the instances of the concrete uh, implementations um, of both of these products well what we will do is we will create another class called concrete factory a which is supposed to have the implementations of the methods defined in the abstract factory interface and again since they are implementing the same methods the return types need to be similar so as you can see that product create product x also has the return type such as product x and create create product y also has return type um, product y but um, deep down they're returning the product x a and y a and similarly there's going to be another concrete implementation of our, of our abstract factory interface which is going to return product XB and YB respectively. Now, you can imagine clients, uh, the client code or the consumer code always using these abstract factory to fetch the uh, fetch the, uh, the, app, the factory methods to create these concrete products and always has to care about the interfaces product X and product Y. And this way, we can let the client create as many products um, you know, as he wants and he can keep adding more products in future and this way our design is going to be able to support families of products in future as well. So for the client code we have created a way for the client to communicate with these concrete factories through an abstract factory and always use the product uh, the generic product types um, which, which are the interfaces in our case such as product X and product Y and the client never has to see the details of the concrete implementations here and this design is going to enable us to add more products and and families of products and related families families of products um, as our uh, as our software software grows now let's see how we can map this design to fix our current object oriented problem so in our case we have an interface notification which has its concrete implementations such as it supports all operating systems, Windows, Mac OS, and Linux. We also have a downloader interface which has its concrete implementations for all three operating systems. And we can create a GUI factory and move both of our factory methods such as the old good old create notification method which was responsible to return the notification interface type and our new factory method which is the create downloader method um, and the return type of this method is the downloader interface and have a Windows UI factory which is only responsible to create um, the concrete uh, Windows Windows type notifications and downloaders and similarly uh, an implementation for Mac OS GUI factory and a Linux implementation and essentially our client is always going to be using this GUI factory to reference these methods and create these instantiations dynamically based on the current configuration of the operating system and we'll always be using the generic interface types of notification and downloader now let's see how we can actually convert this class diagram into our typescript code we will start off by creating the interface for downloader we will add all the possible methods that can go inside this interface and we will obviously be adding the methods that we defined in our class diagram such as the render method, the cancel download method and the pause download method. Next we will add concrete implementations of our downloader interface for all three operating systems such as Windows downloader which is going to have some implementation of the methods defined in the interface and similarly for Mac OS and Linux. Now we will be adding an abstract factory interface called the GUI factory which consists of all the factory methods defined such as the create notification method for creating cross platform notifications and the create downloader method responsible for creating cross platform downloaders. Next we are going to create concrete implementation of our abstract factory GUI factory and it's going to consist of the implementations of the methods defined in the interface and it's going to return the concrete instantiations of our interfaces notification and downloader in case of windows it's going to be windows notification and windows downloader 
and in case of Mac OS, it's going to be Mac notification and Mac downloader. And similarly, we will do, we will repeat the same steps for Linux. Finally, we will get rid of our old recently implemented notification creator class and replace its instantiations in different parts of our application with the new GUI factory interface, which is going to be responsible to create notification and downloaders from now on. We will pass a factory parameter to the constructor of our main application, which is going to be of type generic GUI factory, which is then later going to be decided at the runtime based on the configuration of our operating system. Let's modify the notification service by repeating the same steps and we will leave the rest of the code untouched. Last but not least, let's add a startup code for our main application where we're going to decide which operating system is currently configured. And based on this configuration, we're going to create some instantiation of our GUI factory. And we're going to pass this instance to our main application instance, which is then going to be used throughout the life cycle of our main application. And with that being done, we have successfully implemented our abstract factory pattern to support the cross-platform notification and downloaders for different operating systems.